Greetings, everybody. We have gathered around the table again today for another episode. Uh, but once again, just want to point out at the start here to remind everyone to jump onto Nick Shabazz's channel. Going to have a little link up in the corner here for you to head over to the uh, forum page that he has for running the little competition. Yeah, uh, small time knife reviewers. Nick Shabazz is trying to get some exposure for us, so he's got a nice little contest with 50 different reviewers. Go over and uh, give us a review, good or bad. Honest review is what we're looking for, as mm -hmm. well as everyone else uh, that are on the list. Give them a watch too, because there's some cool guys on that list for sure. Worst case scenario, we hear where we need to improve, and we can do that. Exactly. Yeah. Best case scenario, hey, you might see more of us. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Suckers. <laughs> Suffer. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> I'll just drink now. And you might notice as well is that there's three hands here and one hand is where it shouldn't be. Creepy. Creepy. Yeah. We've got Doing some one of these disassociated yep. hands right now. Because Paul sucks. That he does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll rouse him throughout the evening, but for now we'll just leave mm -hmm. it in Paul sucks. So we'll do it. Yeah. Fist shaking. Yep. Yep. So for buck attempts this week, just decided to be nice and simple and carry my little Rook slip joint. It's a classy little guy. I like it. I've been liking the idea of slip joints more and more recently, and mm -hmm. this keeps coming back up, uh, given how much you and Paul really like that knife. For the price point, for the fit and finish and the steel and stuff, yeah, it's a great little option. It's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, myself... I've been carrying it every single day since I got it. Still, uh, Spider Coast Smock. We're not reviewing the Smock this week. No, nope. <laughs> just as a heads up. Nope. But I will say, it's awesome. Joe's sure just all is. happy about it still. So I love it. I love it so much. You've, you've already heard enough about it, so I'll put that away. No. <laughs> and it's an oldie but a goodie, but I still love it. It's my Contigo. Contigo! So, yeah, big workhorse of a knife. And I was out about yeah. doing stuff, so oh. Yeah, pencil marks on that side. Look. Mm -hmm. oh, hey. <laughs> Where on a knife that you use? Cool, I easily. I may have been keeping score on some things this <laughs> weekend <laughs> and to sharpen a pencil. But Glad you could join us, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. so today we have gathered around to bring you a new offering from CRKT. Yeah. New for 2019 is the Seismic. Woo! CRKT seismic causing waves. Mm -hmm. Sorry, that was terrible. <laughs> uh, seriously though, it's um a lot of hype behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, as far as before initial release, it's featuring the new deadbolt lock from CRKT. The big thing that this knife is featuring is the new deadbolt lock. Press button on the pivot, easy yep. to open, easy to close. Got to credit Flavio Acoma for the design, right? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, knife design as well as the locking design. Um, but it seems like CRKT is hyping this up to be as as big as um, like their field strip technology. This is kind of their next field strip type of idea, right? It is a new innovation for sure, and it's definitely one of the kind of standout new innovations, and especially for locks lately because... Locks have kind of gone stagnant, it seems, and people are trying and seeking out new things and new ways to do stuff. I, for one, am more than happy to see another push-button-based lock. Yeah. Um, just for my own tastes, um, CRKT does a really nice breakdown uh, CAD-based video that shows the 3D models of what all the internal parts look like, and it's a pretty beefy-looking stuff. Mm -hmm. And basically the idea behind it is it has two prongs. One is attached to the blade and locks through the blade into the handle. The other one itself actually locks through to the handle and locks them in place on either side type of thing. So, um, yeah, really impossible to have this shear on you. There's two or three different things that are engaging all at the same time, including uh, thumb studs that are working as stop pins as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, that was really cool. securing stuff into place. In order for this knife to fail, you better be doing something highly, highly Where did you put the cloth? <laughs> really nice satin finish on this blade, which makes oh. everything <laughs> turn out. Very, so, very schmoochy showing blade. Not just us oily boys. So at a overall length of 9.438 inches, it would take about 676 of these to equal the length of the 17th hole at Pebble Beach. Golf course. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for clarifying. <laughs> Uh, I'd rather have this knife than play golf, to be honest. I'm not a huge fan of golf. Yeah. I know you play sometimes, though, don't you? I do play golf from time to time, and I'm just thinking 676 knives on a golf course. You can't play that in Tiger Woods, man. Like that, <laughs> <laughs> I want that kind of power after my third birdie, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sounds like a challenge mode in a PlayStation game. Just have all the knives stuck into the ground. Yeah, t Tiger mode can suck it compared to <laughs> seismic mode. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you'd be talking about like minor earthquakes. No, this is much yeah. worse. Just messes the whole golf course up. It's expensive upkeep. Yep. <laughs> At... 6.3 ounces, it's about the same weight as 71 pennies. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't that. Excellent. It's almost as heavy as a buck knife, man. Yeah. It's, yes. it's beefy. Which it's, is crazy, because yeah. there's a cast yeah. brass handle. Mm. <laughs> like, 76 one. pennies, you said? 71. 71 pennies. Okay, for everyone that out there, put 71 pennies in your pocket and then go, oh, yeah, this is really comfortable. I can carry this every day. No problem. Oh, all right. I think the pennies might be more comfortable just because they're more spread out in your pocket. No. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one, absolutely. And I mean, typical Flavio Coma fashion, it's a big knife. Mm -hmm. Um not small by any stretch of the imagination. And it, it, it seems like there's a, a lot of people talking about how crazy big it is, about how it's not like a regular EDC knife on the market, things like that. Um, well, one of the reasons I grabbed the Cochino this evening is, is it is very comparable knife in a lot of different ways. So I grabbed that one on yeah. purpose tonight mm -hmm. as a use of reference. Pocket link in the access lock, but we won't look at that too, too hard. That's why it's not zoomed in right now. I see. I see. <laughs> we'll be going at it with some tweezers um, later, will you? But yeah, with, with a beefy knife like that, I mean, look at Flavio Coma's history. Mm -hmm. Look at the knives that he produces. The large fossil, fossil the uh, the Carnifex, like you were saying earlier. The small fossil. It's yeah. yeah. Of, like, <laughs> well, isn't that knife. still like a three and a half to three point seven yeah, five inch yeah, blade? Like sure. it's not mm -hmm. tiny. Um, so I think when people, this isn't a giant knife. This isn't like the uh, the XL uh, or the the jumb bones. This is no. The, this isn't the jumb bones. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is definitely still a manageable size. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, as far as a extra large knife, we finally have something. <laughs> it fits. Yeah. <laughs> Nigel's pinky isn't falling off of the back of, mm -hmm. of said knife. So. I think I was in gloves. It might be in question, but as far as ungloved hand, it's just right on. Yeah. So it's actually comfy. And on that note, too, <laughs> no crazy, like, uh, finger choils, anything like that, mm -hmm. to yeah. kind of make it a one size fit all. This very straight handle makes it so even a larger or medium hand can get a decent grip on this knife. Mm -hmm. For sure. It's somewhat close to a neutral grip, which I really do like. Um, I do like also that they rounded this portion of the handle out. So if you wanted to, you could palm it to really dig into something. I, yeah. <laughs> um, the profile of the knife was well thought out. Yep. So, I mean, another really nice thing that I like about this knife is the, the overall aesthetics of it itself. Really good looking blade on this one. Um, yeah, really happy with the design. Flavio makes some out there stuff sometimes, like the fossil, like the black fossil with the <laughs> like spear pointy thing. He, yeah. Oh, that was kind of nasty looking, yeah. So to see a blade shape that's a little more utilitarian and not just out there type of thing, I, it's a nice change to see from Flavio, for sure. Nice flowing lines. It's not a it's not a difficult knife to look at. <laughs> yeah, kind of where some people do find it polarizing is just the the little bit of the sweep to the blade and being on the the edge of the Persiany sort of style blades. You may or may not be one of those people. I'm, it's it's right on the edge for me, so it kind of starts to lose, but it's still not bad looking. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I, I think a big part of what people are talking about with the Persian is because it actually dips from the, the bottom of the handle mm -hmm. to begin with, mm -hmm. that when it kind of swoops back up to still be very even with the actual like spine of the knife itself. There's not a lot of deviation there. Yeah. yeah it, it does give a little bit of that illusion of a Persian type of style to it, right? Mm -hmm. So 
Well, it has a decent amount of belly to it. Um, as far as like an EDC knife, it, I, th I think it's got the right profile for the blade. Uh, whether the orientation could be a little bit lower or not, you know. I think you just have a different knife at that point. You wouldn't have Flavio's touch on it, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, an another really good plus that they came out with was a really cool, and I don't know if we can zoom in on that. Um, it's it's a really cool adjustable detent. And what CRKT okay. has actually done there, little hole right in between the first body screw and the pivot itself. Yeah, right next um, to the adjustable screen. detent. And it's actually on like almost like a bit of a, a lock bar, liner lock type of thing. Yeah. A spring tension bar that oh. the detent mm -hmm. sits on and you can push that bar tighter or looser depending on what you want for it. Oh. Um, really allowing you to dial it in. It is a very neat touch indeed. It's something that not a lot of knives are going to have just due to how detent normally work. So that was mm -hmm. kind of a neat addition to this. Well, and I think the fact that um, I think people have varying opinions on strengths on detent. Some people mm -hmm. like a really stiff detent. Some people want a little bit weaker that it, it'll <laughs> slide out a little bit nicer type of idea, right? Um, so giving everyone the option to be able to have their own preference is kind yeah. of a cool feature. For sure. It's nice for sure. Mm -hmm. One other really nice thing about this guy is it is pretty ambidextrous friendly. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I've heard a lot of people uh, on reviews, a couple different people were talking about how they didn't think this was an ambidextrous knife. And I continue to love how right-handed reviewers are giving lefty <laughs> um, people misinformation instead of just asking lefty mm -hmm. reviewers. Or like, I am right-handed. Yeah. I speak for the lefties. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of guys out there and like saying how it would be like awkward to hit the button, to disengage the button, to close it. Not um, at all. I can't like, there's a lot of mechanisms out on the market, like a compression lock. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, and just grabbing Spyderco yeah. by the rear and throwing them. Around. Well, and if we're on the topic of Spyderco, we might as well throw lockbacks in there too. This for a lefty, yeah. like it's yeah, yeah. Uh, still way easier to engage. So mm -hmm. fair enough. Uh, one other really nice thing for the lefties, they actually machined out the little section there so you can switch the pivot clip. One or the pocket clip. So simple little cutout. Yeah. Yep. And it's not really a compromise. It's still, it looks fine. Yep. You've heard me and Dennis pitch about that multiple times about how it wouldn't take much just to put in something little like that. So you could switch the pocket clip over and yeah, that's nice touch that they did it. And on the note of the pocket clip, I do like the fact that it is not a full blown Benchmade mini on <laughs> some yeah. sort of crazy. Yeah, yeah, 10 clip. Holy, we just looked at that recently. Yeah. That thing's a monster it's a, of a it's clip. It's a hell of a money clip that you got on the side of that knife, right? So it's nice to see something that even with a nine and a half inch blade or a nine and a quarter, you got something that. Well, mm -hmm. it's isn't crazy. Any figure, it's such a long, well, let's be honest, pretty heavy knife. Um, it's not going to shift around in your pocket all that much. So no. having a clip that size, totally reasonable. And one screw, because mm -hmm. they've properly done the milling to lock it in place. They set it, yeah. Yeah, super easy to take and switch. And yeah, yeah. no, I pretty smartly designed. And I kind of like, some people are split on this, but I kind of like how the clip is at a, at a canted angle relative to the rest of the knife. So when it's in your pocket, it wants to lean into the back, sort of the seam area of your pocket. Mm -hmm. So it keeps it nice and seated. Yeah, I heard really split um, opinions on the, the cant when it sits in your pocket. Um, I did try it in both my left and the right. I didn't switch the clip over, but I did notice that, yeah, it tried to fill up your pocket a lot more when it was in your left pocket without switching the clip mm -hmm. over. Yeah. So when I put it in my right, I very obviously noticed that I tried to tuck it out to the side instead of yeah, conflicting with anything, right? Um, I, so, think, I think that's a conscious design choice, though, and I, I think mm -hmm. it worked out really well. Yeah, not only for, for the function of how it sits into the pocket, but it's also... Um, the aesthetics of it, it helps mm. keep the flow of the handle with it like that instead of like trying to force it to be straight. Yeah. I think it was a good choice to, to have that angle for the clip. Well, with all the niceties out of the way, we got some serious beef with this knife. Um, well, we were on the topic of the pocket clip. Mm -hmm. So let's start there. And uh, yeah, we like the fact that it is a nice deep carry. Now, what I personally don't like about it is we found out certain materials, blue jeans in particular, um, seem to be really aggressive with this clip, uh, really hard to take in and out of the pocket 
mm-hmm. with how tight it is, maybe some rebending, things like that, you can make it work. But right now, as it sits, with a work knife, <laughs> a thicker fabric should not be a hard time to get out of your pocket, right? My pants are a little bit of a thinner material. It's not jeans. It wasn't difficult. But seeing you guys struggle with it out of your jeans was kind of like, <laughs> Yeah, wow. definitely grabs the pants for sure. Holy crap. And honestly, it and not is... in a good way. It no. doesn't grab your pants <laughs> in a good way. It's... The knife is grabbing your pants. I don't know if it is in a good way at any point. Emerson waves. Oh, okay. All right. I'll talk myself out of that. Um, I'm glad I could help out. So, flattening the G10, just doing something to make it a little bit less aggressive. Um, mm-hmm. Tweaking the pocket clip, maybe not quite as tight. Maybe because it is a deep carry, they compensated for how tight it is, something like that type of thing. But yeah, it's something. Yeah. Um, I think we should probably just work from that side of the knife and work our way <laughs> yeah. up. So, well, sticking on that side of the knife, um, the jimping on the back spacer on the butt end here, that is sharp and crisp, and those ridges along the edge yeah. just chew my hand trying to get anything in and out of my trying pocket. Trying to slide past the knife to yeah. reach your hand in the pocket, it really kind of chews you off a little bit, for sure. Um, and, and on the backspacer note, what the hell is up with that backspacer <laughs> in the first place? Like It's it's a little odd having that double lanyard hole thing, but then having the holes half covered, and it's a little awkward. It is. Yeah. I really think that they should have filled that knife out with the rest of the G10 and filled it out, and I think ergonomically it would have helped it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the pocket clip so it wasn't quite so slanted. All those people that seem to be complaining about the candid pocket clip, they wouldn't have anything to complain about. I don't honestly see a downside to filling that out. That's just a weird thing. Instead of having it come in, come out, yeah. And then materials-wise, we think aluminum on the backspacer on that one. It's not steel, for sure it's not. It's not magnetized. Um, But pretty sure it's aluminum. Yeah, I, I was joking around that it might be magnesium for the way that the <laughs> contrast looks on it. It's, yeah. well, but see, if it is magnesium, that explains why you have all these harsh chimping and the sharp corners. And I don't think we're – no, no, it's that, that's giving CRT, CRKT too much credit. Well, it would be great for fire starting. For sure. Mm-hmm. I had that. And now thinking more about it, those holes might be ferrocerium storage <laughs> <laughs> facilities to go along with the magnesium kidding? backspacer. No, no, they see. got this whole thing going on. They, it's an unwritten rule. People who know who know. The first rule of the seismic is you don't talk about the fire starting capabilities of the seismic. I just see some guy soaking little cotton balls in kerosene and stuffing them into the <laughs> spacer to light them up later. Oh, yeah, totally. Oh, totally. Man. Yeah, it's it's what it's for there. Yeah, for sure. Um, and Go while on. we're talking about the material of the backspacer itself, they tried to lighten this knife up by giving it some sort of alloy for a backspacer, whether it's aluminum or whatever it may be. Yeah. Skeletonized on the inside, and the weight's still coming in at, uh, at over a six ounce knife. Yeah. I personally believe that has to do a lot with the grind on the blade and the thickness of the blade, to be honest. Um, I think that has a lot to do with the, the bed, deadbolt yeah. system. Yes. Yeah, for Which, sure. it, it's going to be necessary for the strength. Mm-hmm. I'm willing to accept that. Uh, but before we get up into the blade and all the problems that <laughs> has, uh, as far as sharp corners go, these handles are ridiculous with sharp corners. Mm-hmm. Like, they are lousy with sharp corners. <laughs> I have so, so many problems with this. Just for a reference... This man doesn't feel hot spots, yeah. and he's complaining about hot spots. He likes that Rook 138 or whatever it is. It's the worst knife in the world. I'll admit it's not the easiest knife to open, but me personally don't have problems. And you're with like, it. what are you talking about? Yeah. This, this yeah. knife, though, holy crap, guys. Um, so with 3D machining, you'll often work with uh, ball nose end mills. So you're using a round cutting tool to create a radius on things. Um, what they've done here is actually come down, same shape as my finger basically, and milled out a portion of the knife here, a little bit shy of the edge. What that means is it scallops upwards right before the scale terminates. And they didn't chamfer it, they didn't Mm -hmm. soften that at all. So when you're holding this knife and you give it anything more than a light squeeze, you're pretty much bit by that handle. I don't know whether that was intentional or not, but I'm kind of knocking it for that because it's painful. 
Like it's actually now, literally painful to hold. With with CRKT, we noticed it on the jump boats where they try to knock the corners down, but they forget the last corner that's yeah. actually yeah. digging in. And they've done the same thing in a different way. But they've accomplished <laughs> the same thing with yeah. this knife. I was really I had high hopes for this knife because of the finger choil here. It didn't include a second or third. Yeah. I was really liking the way I was going to sit in my hand. And then you squeeze it right there. Yes. And that finger choil there just bites. And it, it was, bites. And I was saying earlier in the more when we're doing the positives for this knife, uh, that I really enjoy the profile of this handle. Like when I look at this, it should be comfortable, but as soon as you squeeze it, as soon as you give it to that 3d aspect, those corners come out to play. Mm -hmm. Uh, that little bit just before mm -hmm. we get off the handles well that's where what i was waiting to jump in and talk oh, about yeah, was um not only the the issue with the bit just being the right size to leave that little chamfer out the very edge it also left a little nub in right in the middle of the finger choil there and that's probably what fighting you so hard because yeah. it actually comes up to a little bit of a peak right there it's like that's part of it for yeah. sure it's like they missed it mm -hmm. like in the cad files when you're developing the 3D machining for this. It's like they actually missed an entire operation where they were supposed to get rid of it. <laughs> and it's not as bad on the back, but it's still kind of there on the top mm -hmm. corner that you do feel it. Now, again, not as much, but I feel it kind of right on the ridge of where the steel and the G10 meets yeah. Yeah. as well, as far as it biting into you. Yeah, that's a little bit more acceptable. But I mean, especially where your fingers are concerned, coming yeah. around to hold that, uh, yeah, total turn off as far as holding that that knife in particular. It's, mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of wow. And it's perplexing. I, just noticing this now, but they've actually done it rounded. <laughs> Sorry, but I just wanted to point this out before. They did chamfer the front end here. Right. But they didn't do it anywhere else. That's odd. Yeah. I just noticed that. Yeah, yeah, they definitely did. Interesting. <laughs> That's upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> they did it on the front bolster. Oop, but, and on the very back, too. And they did. What yeah. the hell? Just a touch on the <laughs> You'll on do the it for my lanyard, but not for my fucking fingers. <laughs> like Pharaoh Rod. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the correction. Jeez. Okay. Anyway. Um, I think while we're on the mid-range topic, before we get to the front of the knife, the other thing I'll actually point out is the action on this knife. And it might have to do with the tension on the adjustable detent bar. Mm. Um, but even just playing with this knife, engaging and disengaging is not bad. But as far as the, the, the fidget factor, the playability, compared to a well-worked-in access lock, a compression lock, or something like that type of thing, um, I haven't seen one yet where you could hit that button and the knife would draw mm -hmm. close. Yeah, we haven't tried playing around with the adjustable detent, and that's probably where it is, but... Uh, I've seen ones where people have talked about Fair enough. it, too, and they've even, like, you look at it, and they're still doing a shake after yep. they get it down to... That even, may just be a limitation of the design. Uh, it's hard to say without. Yeah. I'm curious about the spring tension on the, on the deadbolt itself, and mm -hmm. if there is just constant tension on the pivot, and that's why you're never going to get... The draw, even when you've got the button disengaged, yeah. there's something touching that you're just not getting the smooth action. Um, Which is surprising considering it's on the IKBS. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. like yeah. Yeah, like okay, that's kind of confusing. Mm -hmm. And Why? I'll say I'll say as a right-handed person, I'm using my thumb to depress that lock and shake it closed. A little bit easier than using my index finger, but you're right. There is still this. Uh, you have to apply a little bit of force to really get it to snap. Yeah, and knowing yep. that it is an IKBS system, it is a little bit disappointing. Like especially because I praise CRKT for having their ball bearing system pretty good overall. They're um, usually very dialed in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really hoping for a little bit more on this one, and it came up a little short. Yep. Um, I think that might be everything in the mid-range area, yeah. which kind of yeah. leaves us to the big chunk of whatever they decided to throw on the front of this. It's so fat behind the edge, and normally <laughs> I'm not the type of person to care about thickness behind the edge, but damn, that's a thick blade. And even before we get into the thickness, steel yeah. choice itself. Yeah, that was another disappointing uh, factor. 1.4116 croup, uh, 4116, you hear it called a lot. Yeah, whatever it may be. Um, for the price? Come on. Yeah. Yes, they're totally out to lunch for this. Um, 150 MSRP, now you can't find it cheap there, or more expensive in places, but 150 on CRKT's website is a little bit ridiculous. At least you're getting real G10 and a pretty cool <laughs> lock and a good aluminum spacer, but 
four one one six. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it doesn't paying, really make up for it. This. Yeah. yeah, it's this is what you're paying for. Well, they pulled this before with the the field strip, uh, the field strip technology. Yeah. Knives. Yeah. Um, even the Rakiri, which had aluminum handles, was also four one one six. So, not shocking, but I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Come on. Oh yeah, we haven't said anything about that. Uh, fuck you, Paul, for not being here. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, yeah. Way to feel sick, Paul. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for that. You know what makes you feel better? <laughs> Getting off your butt and coming out here and talking about some knives. I've been ragged on too hard for too long to not take a shot at you. Sorry, man. Um, no apologies. All right. Well, fuck you, Paul. <laughs> the difference is, is I know Paul puts scoring stuff up in his Instagram story. Even though Unlike you some don't. people. Yeah. And if you hadn't watched last week's review when you weren't here, you'd know that we ragged on you for that. Oh, but... I know that you did. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, you did. Oh, wow. Okay. So on to the knife itself. Yeah. Well, keeping on to the steel and the steel choice and what some people think it's comparable to or possibly better than. Well, I've heard... Uh, at least three or four different people now on some reviews talking about like a mild, a, a bit of a step up from HCR 13 MOV um, with the 1.416. It's not, guys. It's Lies. not at all. Unless you're talking about stain resistance, you are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it is a stain resistance is that. But um, we were looking into the actual specs on it, and um, truly it is closer to a 5CR 13 or 5CR 15 MOV. Mm -hmm is yeah, yeah kind of the the chart that we were looking at um yeah guys 150 bucks for 5 cr that's, never mind yeah. 8 cr come on that's a tough pill to swallow guys. very tough pill like I'm, no matter how cool your new yeah. lock system is it's yeah it's it's not that cool <laughs> yeah at, at the consumer end we're still paying for the overall package so and i've heard a couple people talk about as well um not being too familiar with 1.46, so it almost seems to me like CRKT is is using it as a little bit of a mystery steel that until you're informed about it, you might be willing to pay this price. Because there's people out there that are like, I'm not familiar with it, I don't know how it performs, but yeah. Maybe, yeah. CRKT has very rarely, if ever, aimed its sights at cons or, uh, collector consumers, right? Very rarely. But at this price point, you kind of assume that you're aiming at a collector or somebody who wants the, the I wouldn't call it gimmicky, but the novelty of this interesting. There's novelty. lots of CRKT collectors out there and fanboys yep. out there that yeah. love their brand CRKT. Yeah. And I don't know if collector is necessarily the right word, but at least enthusiast. Yeah. yeah. Like at, at that sort of price point, it's not going to be for the regular sort of guy that just wants to go get a cheap knife to beat up and stuff like that. This is at a price point where it's a knife guy looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, again, one of the other reasons I brought this to the table tonight is when you're looking at price point, even running MSRP is 245 for the Contigo compared to 150 So yes, it is $100 more American for this knife, but what you're getting with the M4 steel, the steel backspacer with the window punch, and access lock that's doing 1,000 plus pounds. Yeah. Like... Wow. It's worth that um, extra hundred bucks. It is an upgrade. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The price point is an upgrade on this guy here, but when you're looking at a big worky tank a horse tank horse? Tank horse <laughs> of a knife. Yeah. I need to see that illustrated. There's now. a picture of a tank horse. It's, yeah. There won't be there won't be a picture. <laughs> um yeah, uh, pr price is out to lunch, definitely. Yep. Steel choice is out to lunch, definitely. Um, and I mean, it's a, it's a damn shame because this knife was so close to being something that I could get really excited about. Mm -hmm. uh, and that seems to be a reoccurring lawn running theme of CRKT. Something I want to be excited about. And then when you get it in hand, it just doesn't live up to, to the expectations of what I want it yep. to be. Right. So you have Flavio Acoma designing <laughs> you shit, give it good materials. It deserves yep. it. Even the 12 C that you're, that, that they're using in the, um, some of the revamped uh, M21s and M16s. Yeah. Like, that would have been really cool to see that in 12C. Like, ah, like, eh, 150, yeah, okay. Yeah. I might have been able to justify that. It's kind of like getting a Lamborghini and then having, like, go-kart tires on it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you, you feel like you're going to have all this performance. It's going to be really cool and stuff like that. But then rubber to road, it just doesn't work out. <laughs> just 
blow out all your tires. Yeah. That's kind of... <laughs> that's kind of how I feel for the steel for the And then you tell them you're going off-roading. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I mean, to make matters worse, they gave it such a fat freaking grind on this thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've heard from a number of different people now, Sajid Kaneda being one of them. One really? of them in particular that a thinner steel is going to hold a finer edge for longer. You're going to get better cutting performance out of it. With a steel this wide, that wide of an angle, 4116 just isn't going to hold Some up. Some of the, the cutting performance he was getting on like a 12 degree angle with croup steel. Yeah. yeah. That was a little bit silly, right? Yeah, so. it seems like, especially just for straight slicing sort of style cutting, that the 4116 steel definitely likes a thinner angle. <sighs> And last but not least, with that thinner angle, you'll talk about the heat treatment on this knife. Yeah, um, holy crap, yeah. I just forgot. 54 <laughs> to 56 on the heat treatment Which on is this knife. Pretty soft. It's abysmal for any knife, but especially 4116. You're just not going to get any kind of meaningful edge retention with it whatsoever. Yeah, no. yeah, if you put 56 on the low end of the spectrum and did a 56 to a 58 or a 57 to 59 or something like that, much easier pill to swallow. Mm-hmm. And it would probably help with the thicker edge geometry because yeah. thinner would probably make it more sensitive at those higher rock wells right so that would actually uh add the benefit of having a thicker edge by putting it yeah. on, a, on a thicker heat treatment at the same time right for what they're aiming for for a large consumer grade edc knife yeah no that that would have been great mm-hmm. but once again uh it seems like it's all compromises all the way through um that seems to be crkt <laughs> <laughs> but but it's tantal they're tantalizing us with D- uh, redone designs with D2 and 12C. Yeah. It's like, why the hell yeah. wouldn't you do that with these guys? Like, so close. Because, <laughs> so close. close. Because you're getting a big premium for that, whether it's worth it well, or not, mm-hmm. is what you're paying for. And that's what CRKT is putting their money in the bank for, is, is that little pivot right there, right? Which is insane because there's already so many strong locks out there. They think they could really bank on that, right? Like, I, I know we're going over the time limit right now, but there's one other thing we forgot to talk about, and that's the similarities to a Paul lock. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and not very many people have brought it up. It seems to be an overlooked thing, but there was a guy named Paul Pullman that actually did some knives. He did for Lone Wolf. He did for Benchmade for a while and made some pretty, really pretty stuff. Oh, yeah. With almost an identical lock. It's slightly different. The major difference being, for all you Paul fans out there, you'll remember, but when you're going to close the knife with the Paul lock, as you squeeze the pivot, the blade would stay in the current orientation and the handle would swing freely to shut. This is the opposite, where... Your uh, your blade is the th- is the thing that moves. That was the main difference that yeah, I've noticed. The button locked the blade in place, and you you flick the blade down into your the handle down into your hand with a Paul Pullman knife, which I thought was kind of cool. <laughs> I like playing with them yeah. quite a bit, right? But they're talking about amazing innovation and how come no one has ever came up with this design. It seems so like logical that you would do it. And yes, with the double prong thing going in, that's a very clever design. But it's not like someone hasn't done Something just as secure of a lockup <laughs> with a similar uh, mechanism. Right? So, hey, so, Paul, we're giving you a shout out. <laughs> Love your knives, man. I wish you would come back with some, some more popular designs because I'd like yeah. to see the Paul lock in some stuff it was Ooh, cool with some modern handle which yeah, yeah. Some modern steel yeah. that'd be cool that's a different topic for a different day <laughs> absolutely <laughs> all right last but not least we're gonna grade this some bitch so i ended up giving this guy a d for the grade um a 62 average overall um yeah i don't know i'm pretty indifferent about this guy um other than the fact that it's large enough and comfy enough for my hand it's just kind of a middle of the road doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, high points, low points? Um, high points were the action and lockup, just because it is a new, neat design and something different to play with. Yeah. Um, low points for me, the material choice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolute <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I myself, I, I gave it a D. Uh, I gave it a 58. Um, yeah, honestly, I wanted to like this knife. High points for me were actually the aesthetics. I really like the look of this knife. I can really see it being something that I could use a lot of function behind um, with the design of it. Simple blade shape, simple handle, right up Dennis's mm-hmm. alley. 
Uh, negatives were just like Nigel, uh, definitely the material choice on my personal, but also my cost versus materials. Both of those got equally very low scores for me because uh, a Krupp Steel and G10 for 150 bucks for the co cost does not yeah. cut it for me, guys. I'm sorry. Not for um, a Chinese, Taiwanese made knife. I'm, no, no, I'm getting uh, bench made bug outs for a similar price. Mm -hmm. So, different knife, I understand, <laughs> but. Just hearing that out loud makes me want to give this a lower rate. <laughs> it's too late. It's too, too late. late now. We've gone too far. Oh, that's fine. I'm locked in at a 55, the absolute bare minimum for a D. When I initially ranked this, I was going to give it an F. <laughs> um, there's just so damn much I hate about this. And probably because I was excited for it initially when I saw the uh, you know early reviews. And mm -hmm. It has a lot of potential. It's a, yeah. it's a wicked design. It's just the execution was so crap. Um, for me, yeah, low points were cost for materials. <coughs> uh, the ergonomic, for my ergonomic preference, and material choice on the personal side, those were also uh, both four out of ten. Um, yeah, I did give it some points for aesthetics. Uh, it felt okay in the pocket, like it was pretty good. It, the geometry isn't so god awful that it wouldn't work. It's just it's forty one sixteen. It's not going to work for long. Mm -hmm. And again, that leads into bad material choice for the design like and for the price yeah it was really hard for me to scrounge up 55 points for this <laughs> i don't think it quite deserved to fail that's why i was really mulling it over but yeah, yeah. just wow and i'm pretty sure paul did give it a fail but again you can check out on his instagram to see what kind of rankings he has because yep. he's actually pretty good at posting he Unlike is some but people we know. I'll, I'll, he, be better. I'll be better he sucks so we'll just leave him to do that and not bother putting it up here oh, it's, yeah. it's up for Ooh, him so yeah, yeah. spicy <laughs> This is a three-man review tonight for a reason. <laughs> yeah, so. Auditions will be... No. <laughs> See, that hurt when you did it for me when I wasn't there, but it felt better this time. Um, on the one last final note, we want to thank The Cutting Edge mm -hmm. for, again, yes. letting us borrow this knife to review. Uh, the really awesome shop that lets us take knives and actually do some reviews on them, and we get to, to tell you guys what we think of it. Yeah, it is muchly appreciated, for sure. Absolutely, it is. Um, and I wanted to make another note of this, especially with all the reviews, the small channel going on with the contact contest with Nick Shabazz. We're not sponsored by the Cutting Edge. No. Um, they're just kind enough to let us have these knives. So our reviews are trying to be as unbiased as possible. Um, we're not mm -hmm. getting paid by anyone or giving funds for anyone, as you can tell from the quality of <laughs> our videos. <laughs> and we should also say that we've said occasionally, donated for review. That doesn't mean that we actually keep these knives. These no. are basically loaned to us overnight so we can do a quick review. Yeah. And along with that, it's because they are loaned, we're not really using them. So our... Cutting test, lock test, stuff like that. They're hypotheticals, but we've yeah. been around the knife game long enough that we have a good idea of what we're doing. And, exactly. And you're getting four people's opinions, so you're mm -hmm. getting different opinions on those things too. So. Yeah, but so. if there is anyone out there who does want to sponsor us and or send us <laughs> knives that we can abuse to really test out, feel free to do so. Contact us. We would love to play that game. Advanced Knife Pro, if you haven't broken all of your knives, <laughs> send a crappy one our way. We'll break it and review it. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. Give, it a, give it a good test for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, on that note, I think we pretty much said what we need to say for this guy. So that'll be that for this week. Nigel the Smith signing off. Uh, I am who I am. I'm Dennis Fibers. I am the Iron Joe. And don't forget, Paul sucks. <laughs> Paul sucks. <laughs>